Good morning, how are you guys? It's Dr. Emily, podiatrist, human movement specialist, founder of the Evidence-Based Fitness Academy and inventor of Novosa Technology. So super excited to be speaking about a topic that is super hot and really in focus uh, within the athletic community, particularly with the NFL, football, combine is coming up, as well within the uh, really movement longevity brain optimization category. Um, and the topic is about concussions and TBI or traumatic brain injuries. So an aspect of concussions and traumatic brain injury that is often overlooked. So if someone experiences a concussion or a, or a TBI, is really looking at their immediate post effects. Do they have any vision disturbances, any bounce disturbances from a static position? But what happens when we challenge these athletes or these individuals um, from a further functional perspective? So I wanna share with you a research study that was really interesting, and this is just one example of many research studies related to this topic, but I just wanted to bring it to the forefront and then also share that I'm gonna be speaking about this topic at the February NFL Combine. Super excited that Nabosa Technology is sponsoring this event, and we're going to be able to share our technology with the coaches and the athletic trainers of the NFL, and then we're going to be presenting it at Perform Better Summit, speaking at the Chicago Summit. Super excited for that. So if you're in the Midwest or if you're traveling to that, they're an amazing event. And then presenting it at a Mind Movement Cognition Summit at Harvard Medical School. So I'm very excited. So the article that I want to share with you guys is, it is the effect the effect of divided attention on gait stability following concussion. And this study was done, um, it's a 2004 study, which is fine, there's still um, more current studies that are done, but really looking at what is happening, status post concussion in athletes. So this was done on athletes who had experienced a uh, grade grade two concussion. And what it was showing is that when you really push their gait a little bit further, this is where you started to see uh, dysfunction. So what this is called, when you start dividing someone's attention during functional movement, during gait, or if you're thinking you're putting that athlete back on the field, and they have to now control the coordination of movement while navigating other athletes. There's a high cognitive demand when you are on the field from the balance of a sensory perspective from a cognitive decision perspective. What that is called is dual tasking. And dual tasking pushes and forces an aspect of the cognitive prefrontal cortex brain. So if you have a client or an athlete, you really wanna make sure that you're not just looking at um, single tax, task balance. Are you really pushing these athletes or these patients to see the way that they're handling what's called dual tasking. So the way that you assess dual tasking is that you would do a balanced task, even if it's a single leg stance. A lot of the studies will do a single leg stance or you can do um, on a force plate, so you're measuring what's called medial lateral sway and to force them into a dual task. Some of the research studies that I've read would have you count in multiples of three backwards, uh, 100 to zero. So that's forcing you into it. Research study that I referenced here had subjects count backwards from 100 in multiples of seven. You could spell words backwards and you're, you're telling them the words, they don't know the words. And then um, another one that they used is that you're reciting the months from December to January backwards. So it's something that is forcing them into a higher cognitive kind of recall aspect of the brain. What's interesting is they, they saw that those athletes that actually pass the concussion function assessment, when you force them into a dual tasking situation, they actually failed. So it's very curious if we're returning these athletes to play without sufficient ability to process the art of dual tasking. So the way that this would be presented as soon as you force them into a dual tasking situation is they get an immediate increase in medial lateral sway. Now medial lateral sway is one of the highest markers of fall risk or an instability risk. So it's their control of their center of gravity. 
So what we can do is use other dual tasking research. I've referenced a lot of other dual tasking research that shows particularly in seniors, but it can be in anyone, even if their status post concussion and ensuring that you're allowing optimal sensory stimulation. This is really what we're doing with Nervosa technology and really our focus through 2018 and why I really want to um, educate and hit up the NFL players and the NFL coaches is so that they can understand how to appropriately use sensory stimulation to optimize cognitive processing. To understand this, we need to go back to what's called the homunculus. And this is really how your brain, how your motor cortex sees movement. The way that your motor cortex sees movement is through, I'm sorry, my dog, is sees movement is through the homunculus. This means that it's the most sensitive areas of the body from an afferent perspective. This would be the hands and this would be the feet. The hands and the feet are packed with a very unique mechanoceptors. Mechanoceptors are nerve endings that are seeking, seeking touch. Now the touch that they are seeking comes from a two point discrimination, a skin stretch, a vibration, and a deep pressure. This is how we are using Nabosa technology to stimulate that aspect of the homunculus, meaning the skin on the bottom of the feet. If you can optimize sensory stimulation, optimize the homunculus, feed the motor cortex from the way that it sees movement and sees stability, then you can better, better appropriately challenge dual tasking. So there has to be a dual tasking element in these players return to play post concussion. However, if they are doing dual tasking training with these athletes, you must make sure that you are optimizing the sensory stimulation. If you are doing dual tasking drills or training and you do not optimize sensory stimulation, you're not creating the proper sequencing for the brain to function really in the optimal way or in the um, truly functional way. So to learn more on the art of dual tasking and Nobosa technology and sensory stimulation and the homunculus, please, if you are in the Midwest, if you're planning to attend the Perform Better Summit, or if you happen to be going to Harvard or the NFL combine. Come check out and learn more about what Nabosa Technology and EBFA are doing to further enhance the concept of brain, barefoot, and the art of human movement. I hope you guys are doing amazing. Have a great day. If you have not checked out Nabosa, please head over to NobosoTechnology.com. I will see you soon. Stay barefoot strong.